Hello, I'm Andreas from Biter, and today you will learn something about your plunger you didn't know until now. We will talk about why your wrenches break, why eventually you had problems with your spring ball, and how you can determine the length of the plunger. So stay with us. Now I want to show you how it's possible to break a biter plunger wrench. Fact is, this wrench is a sort of torque indicator. If you are able to fix the plunger and then you want to fix it even more, you will break the noses. And that's why you have a too big leverage. If you keep it, hold it like this and try to pull it, or push it, or whatever, turn it, you have to hold it like this, and nothing happens. So just hold it in the front, and not in the back. Then I can assure you, you won't break any wrench. In the front, not in the back. The leverage you have here is enough to fix your plunger so that it's not moving anymore. Another big mistake many archers do is to try to fix the spring ball so that the plunger doesn't click anymore. There is nothing against it to block it because you don't trust other people passing at your bow without touching it. But if you try to tighten the spring ball so that it doesn't move the barrel anymore, You have the option to gently close it, gently. When you start feeling any pressure against it, stop. Don't try to go over this, because now it's already blocked. So gently, again, just a quarter of a turn brings you back to have a click, okay? And one quarter of a turn and you feel a resistance and it won't move anymore. Don't over tighten it, there is no warranty on this. How to read the scale on a biter plunger? You see here, there's a scale from zero, it goes to ten. In the middle it's a five, it's written. Here you have on the barrel 10 numbers from 0 to 9. This means you can move the barrel forward and backward and preload the spring by 0 0.1 millimeter. Every click is 0 0.1 millimeter. I go back now to 7.5, 8.0. One complete turn brings back to 7. Why? Because the barrel is a M10 barrel with one complete turn on any screw, you move the screw in and out, or the barrel in and out, by one millimeter. Same thing here on the nut. If I have the nut here, I can open it just a little bit to show you that if I turn it one complete turn, I just moved out the plunger by one millimeter. Same thing, I can move in half a turn, so I move the plunger in half a millimeter and I can even go to a quarter so I can as precisely as possible move in and out the plunger and preload the spring. We also ask often which is the right length of the biter plunger I have to buy? Well, it depends which bow arrow rest, arrow, combination you use. So you can easily take your plunger and measure, eventually with the caliper, the screw in depth. That means you try on your bow, which is the right position, then you take it out and measure the, the length. In this case, 
it's 20.83 millimeters. 20.83 means you have to buy a plunger which is up to 23 millimeters, so 17 to 23, it's the most common plunger setup. If you need a longer plunger, you see here a 7 millimeter and an 11 millimeter nut. If you change this from the plunger you have, you can change the length by 4 millimeter. Or you just change the tip. A black tip is 2 millimeter longer than a white tip. The dark green tip is 2 millimeter longer than the light green tip. The third option, if you have a really big cutout on your riser and you need a longer than 27 millimeter, which is a short barrel with the short nut, you need a long barrel like this one. And you see the difference. A short barrel has the white or black tips and the long barrel, the green and dark green tips. So this is the easy explanation that you have different lengths, different options from 17.5 to 35.5 millimeters just by changing the barrel or and the nut or and the tips. Don't use the tips, the green tips on the short barrel and don't use the black and white tips on the long barrel. It won't work. Sometimes it's necessary that you clean your plunger and I will show you how easy it is. It's important that you remember the position you have, in this case 7.5. 7.5. Now you can open it completely and disassemble the plunger so you are able to clean the inner part of it. You take out the spring, the pin and the distance bolt and then with the pipe cleaner you can clean the barrel, you can clean the front and if you double the pipe cleaner you can easily clean the back. You can do it dry or you can use some acetone. If you use acetone, be sure to wait long enough that it can evaporate. After that's happened, you reassemble it. And you remember the position you had? It's reproducible. So if you reset it at 7.5, your plunger will be absolutely in the same position as it was before when you started to clean it. This was a tutorial on a Biter plunger, the most used plunger from all high-level arches worldwide. Be sure to have yours and to clean yours and to take care of your plunger. Visit us on our channels on YouTube, on Instagram and on Facebook and maybe in the next weeks we will do a new tutorial to show you how easy it is the archery life with biter accessories. Thank you.